Hey guys, this looks like a fun one. It says determine the limit, and it's the limit as x approaches 1 of 1 minus the square root of the quantity 2x squared minus 1 over x minus 1. So ultimately, we want to know what is the value of this function as x approaches 1. First thing we can do is call direct substitution, and we can plug in 1 for each of the x's. And then we can evaluate the expression. So first, this 1 is getting squared, so we can move that in here, and 1 squared is equal to 1. And then 2 times 1 is equal to 2. And then on the inside of the square root, 2 minus 1 is equal to 1, and square root of 1 is equal to 1. So on top, we end up with 1 minus 1. And then on bottom, this parentheses isn't doing anything, and we have 1 minus 1 on bottom. That ends up giving us 0 over 0, and this is an indeterminate form. So let me show you something I made up. If you ever see 0 over 0, that just means more work. So I turned these two zeros into O's, and I made it say more work. So if you ever see the indeterminate form 0 over 0 when you're doing a limit, it just means you have more work. So let's do that more work. Anytime you see a binomial, including a radical expression, usually you're going to multiply top and bottom by the conjugate. For the conjugate, you leave the first and second terms alone, but then you change the minus to a plus, or if it were a plus, you change it to a minus. And then so you don't change anything, whatever you do to the top, you have to do to the bottom. So you're also going to multiply the bottom by the conjugate of the top. So now let's simplify this. You always want to copy down this limit as x approaches 1. Teachers will mark you wrong if you don't copy this down at each step. And let's draw the giant fraction bar. Now we can FOIL. 1 times 1 is equal to 1. And then 1 times positive of this square root is positive of this square root. And then 1 times negative of this square root is negative of the square root. And then for the last term, negative times positive will give us a negative. And then the square root of 2x squared minus 1 times the square root of 2x squared minus 1 is just 2x squared minus 1. Multiplying the square root by itself made the square root go away. And then on bottom, we're just going to leave these factored. Usually whenever you use a conjugate like this, the one that doesn't have the conjugate, you usually don't multiply it out. And you're going to see why in a minute. So now we can simplify this. This positive radical and negative radical are going to cancel each other out. And then let's smush everything together. And then for the next step, let's copy down the limit and the denominator, and let's clean up this numerator. We can bring down the 1, and then this negative is going to distribute to both of these terms. So negative times 2x squared is negative 2x squared, and then negative times negative 1 is positive 1. We can put the like terms together, and 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. And then let's rearrange this into descending order. Our leading coefficient for the top is a negative 2. Let's factor out the negative 2. So negative 2 times what gives us negative 2x squared? That'll be x squared. And then negative 2 times what gives us positive 2? Well, that's going to be negative 1. So now on top, we have negative 2 times x squared minus 1. Let's copy down the negative 2. And this x squared minus 1, this is a difference of two squares. Here's the notes right here for difference of two squares. Anytime you have a squared minus b squared, you can write that as a minus b times a plus b. So we can factor this x squared minus 1 as x minus 1 times x plus 1. And this is the exciting part. This x minus 1 on top and this x minus 1 on bottom, they can cancel each other out. So now we're left with the limit as x approaches 1 of negative 2 times the quantity x plus 1 over this, which was the conjugate from before. Now let's try direct substitution again. In the place of this x, we'll plug in 1. And in the place of this x, we'll plug in 1. On top, inside the parentheses, the 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. And negative 2 times 2 is equal to negative 4. And on bottom, this squared only goes to the 1. And 1 squared is equal to 1. And 2 times 1 is equal to 2. And let's smush everything together. Under the square root, 2 minus 1 is equal to 1. And the square root of 1 is equal to 1. So then we end up with 1 plus 1, which is equal to 2. And negative 4 divided by 2 is equal to negative 2. This is the answer to our question. Let's put a box around it. So the limit as x approaches 1 of this function is negative 2. I really like this one because it involves a conjugate factoring out a GCF, and it's a negative GCF, which is even cooler. And it also involved factoring with difference of two squares. So this limit had a whole bunch of different things going on. And if you want to see the graph in Desmos, here it is right here. If we do the direct substitution and we go visit 1, it says here 1 comma undefined. And that undefined is the 0 over 0. So this is not defined for x equals 1. But we can look at the limit as we approach 1. And you can see here that it is approaching basically negative 2. We can actually get closer. Let's zoom in. So from here, as we get close, you can see it's negative 1.998. As we come from the other direction, negative 2.004. We can even keep getting closer, negative 1.999. And from here, it would be negative 2.001.
but at one, it's not defined. And this was just a crazy looking graph anyway. It's not defined in the middle here, but it's got this branch here and this branch here. Comment on what you'd like me to work on next, and I'm gonna put a link to subscribe right here. And there's also a video here, and there's a little button that says video recommended for the user. So whatever video you see right here, that's the video that YouTube thinks you're gonna like the most. How exciting.